I'm a fiend, bro. What's Gucci, my homies? This is the cringiest intro ever that it's taken me four times to do. It's gonna be my turn for the outtakes, but today we're diving into the age old question. Are sweeteners, artificial sweeteners bad for you? There's so much controversy over this and we wanna dive into the science and explore it. It's a big part of my life. What are artificial sweeteners is the age old question. Why is it that something that tastes as good as sugar can be no calories? I mean, I can't believe it's not butter, if you know what I mean. So what they are, are they are synthetic sugar substitutes that are derived from sugar themselves or potentially other herbs and plants. Stevia comes from the stevia root whereas other sugar substitutes like sweeteners and such come from sugar themselves and the way they work are they are weird mutations of sugar and it's kind of they make it in a lab in the sense that your body doesn't recognize it as a carb source as that sugar type so your body's not able to actually digest it hence it passes it causing it to have no to very low calorie amounts so what is the main goal of an artificial sweetener? Now there are a couple things to look at. Number one is that it just completely reduces your caloric intake. Number two is that it reduces the amount of sugar that you'll be consuming. So for those of you who have diabetes, a lot of the times you'll be recommended to use an artificial sweetener. Number three, it'll satisfy your sweet tooth cravings. But the main and overall goal that I find a lot of people use an artificial sweetener for is just to help with weight loss and weight management. On top of that, you'd only need a fraction of the amount of sweetener compared to sugar to get the same sweetness in each drink that you're going to be having. So Kyle and Josh, you're giving me all this information on artificial sweeteners, but what for? Okay guys, here are the two main issues at hand. Number one, far too many people believe that artificial sweeteners are a direct link to cancer. Number two, far too many people use artificial sweeteners as a weight loss tool and end up treating themselves with a heavy dense dessert or something along the lines of that and end up overeating and this is super counterintuitive to what they're actually trying to do. Now let's talk application. Is it okay to use these diet substitutes as a exception or as a staple for your everyday state of life? I would say that it is okay to within moderation. The issue with having too much isn't so much in having it in excess as it's very hard to do. The studies that did link the cancer were in crazy amounts, it was the equivalent of over a dozen cans a day, which is just bonkers. It'd be very hard to get to that level, even if you tried. But on the other side, on the hind side here, a lot of people use it for the wrong reasons, and they end up addicted. Like you hear stories of a lot of dieting women going out for their 12th can a day, and you gotta ask yourself, am I doing this as a moderation, as something to add to enjoy my life, or am I using it destructively? So to have it within moderation a couple times a day, for instance, in your coffee to substitute that sugar with Splenda, it will actually in turn bring you closer to your goal if that's weight loss or that's health, kind of putting yourself in a better position than supplementing with a bunch of real sugars. However, you don't wanna go crazy and completely remove sugar from your diet and substitute everything with these aspartame, sweetener kind of complexes. Said mix it up, be realistic with it. Diet Coke's an incredible substitution. Amino acids and other flavors like that it really adds to it. And you don't have to be too scared of it, however. Just don't become addicted. Don't be afraid of sugar. Sugar won't kill you as well, and that's something to keep in mind. Another interesting fact is that some studies have actually shown a recent study, and this could be caused by a multitude of other factors, but it's interesting to note that an individual in this gentleman's study lost more when substituting water for Diet Coke and their weight loss in the group that only had water. Diet Coke provides some fun, it gets the dopamine receptors firing, makes you feel nice and full and like you're having a guilty pleasure when you really aren't, and that's the beauty of it. To make a long story short, my camera ended up dying. I didn't have any extra batteries. That was my fault, but I'm gonna continue on with this video and continue to provide the information you guys want within artificial sweeteners. You guys have heard the gist of it. You guys know what it, they are, what they do, what they're meant for. We've talked about weight management, but now time to break down each artificial sweetener or at least the main ones that you guys will hear on a daily basis, um, starting with aspartame. So basically aspartame, I'd say, is probably the most common one you guys will hear. Um, it's sold under brand names such as NutraSweet, um, Equal, there's like a bunch of them going around. Like when you have a Diet Coke, it's filled with aspartame, um, there's gum with aspartame and whatnot. So basically it's 200 times sweeter than sugar. Um, a lot less of it can be used, um, giving you the same level of sweetness compared to sugar. But the main issue at hand is there are so many rumors going around about aspartame basically saying that 
it'll lead to so many different heart um, so many different sorry health problems uh, such as cancer and like it is circulating the internet like crazy I just know way too many people that when they see me drinking a Diet Coke or anything like that they're just like dude like just drink a regular coke I'm like no like this isn't gonna kill me this is not bad and one thing I want to make clear to you guys is I care a lot about you guys I care a lot about my health some people may see me eating a donut, drinking an energy drink, drinking a Diet Coke or anything like that and they're thinking like, what is wrong with this guy? But a lot of people just do not understand that you can have carbs after 8, you can do a lot of this stuff and still be healthy. I wouldn't be providing you guys with this information and putting this out there if I didn't firmly believe in the research I've looked at from a lot of those educated people who are in labs doing this stuff. And I wouldn't be passing this information along to you guys if I did not do it myself. So with that being said, we're going to jump into aspartame. I'll give you guys a little bit of facts. So there have been many studies that have been looking for health effects by testing um, lab animals with a crazy amount of aspartame. When I say crazy amount, I say like 4,000 milligrams. Put that into perspective, that's four grams, which is like a ton of Diet Coke. And there were no results which found that aspartame had a direct link to any health related issues. Now on the other side of the spectrum there was actually a study done by uh, a group of Italian researchers that basically said that high amounts of aspartame um, in a rodent um, or a rat you could say will have a direct link and impact um, to you know blood related cancers such as leukemia, lymphomas, um, but the FDA which is known as the Food and Drug Administration kind of took this information, questioned it all and basically said that they didn't have enough sufficient um, research and like you know data to actually make this claim but the reason I'm telling you this is because you know let's say these guys this group of Italian researchers were to put out their study to put out this information online most people will look at it and be like wow they have a lot of you know information a lot of data let's believe that aspartame is gonna kill you in two years or that it's gonna have this huge effect on you so you know just look be on the lookout for that because anybody can write an article anybody can make a video um, just like I'm doing right here except I have a lot of backed up information from some of the top scientists in the world there's also an early study done in the 1980s that basically stated um, that aspartame could have been a link to brain tumors but later on the NCI which stands for the National Cancer Institute um, you know found out the information that brain tumors actually had begun in the 1970s or started becoming more relevant which was much before aspartame was in use a lot of people that were also around the age of 70 were also developing brain tumors and they were people who were not using aspartame um, so this was something that was published um, I think a lot of people believed and kind of got this myth going now on top of that the NCI the National Cancer Institute basically did a study with over 500,000 people um, some of which you know had a high amount of aspartame compared to some which had none and they found that there was no um, increase in the people who had aspartame um, for what lymphomas leukemias or brain tumors you know anything of the sort the FDA has actually set an ADI which stands for an acceptable daily intake of aspartame and this comes to 50 milligrams per kilogram that you weigh which actually comes to 18 to 19 cans of diet soda now let's put this into perspective if you are someone who has let's say four cans of Pepsi per day that's gonna be you know close to six to seven hundred calories if you were to replace those with diet soda you'll be chopping off a large amount of calories within your day which will help you reach your weight loss goals faster with that being said you need to make sure that you're not going on a binge and rewarding yourself with a Big Mac because you're having a Diet Coke now guys, just one thing I want to add in, there is a rare genetic disorder called phenylketonuria. Basically, it's presented at birth, and what it means is that the body can't break down phenylalanine, which is an amino acid found in many foods. Um, so because phenylalanine is a component of aspartame, it's important that people with this um you know that have been diagnosed with this at birth actually limit their aspartame but aside from that there really is nothing else to be worried about but for those of you who do have this I'd be on the lookout and that is why there are um, these warnings on labels number two in the list we're gonna talk about sucralose which is also known as Splenda you guys probably hear this one just as much maybe a little bit less than aspartame but I'd say it's number two on the list basically what studies say is that it is perfectly safe for human consumption um, but to be a little bit more specific, it isn't harmful to your immune system, doesn't cause cancer, um, infertility, it doesn't pose a risk to pregnancy, and it also um, it doesn't have any effect to your blood sugar levels as well. So the acceptable daily intake of sucralose 
um, happens to be around five milligrams per kilogram, and they say that the typical person consumes about 1.6. Out of all the studies that have been done on this, there are none that say that sucralose has any potential dangerous effects on you. Um, if you can find one, link me to it, please, but out of everything I've looked at and every study that I've um, gone through, there has been nothing that said that it has a negative effect. Now the one thing I did come across was um, similar to aspartame, there has been a bit of research that basically states that there is a direct link between sucralose intake and migraines. Number three on the list is saccharine, which is also known as those little sweet and low packages. I'll put a picture up on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. Basically, there was a study done in 1970 um, which was linked to urinary bladder cancer. This was found in rats. Um, I think this is what really started the notion that it was super bad for you, that you should avoid it. At all costs, stay away from this artificial sweetener. But in 2000, the National Institute of Health actually removed this from the list of suspected um, carcinogens that were, you know, to be staying away from and it actually was deemed to be perfectly fine for you to consume. Now one thing you need to keep into consideration is that there was another study done that basically stated that you would need to have 50, 50 servings of a drink that were full of saccharine to have some kind of negative effect on you. So a lot of these things are blown out of proportion. Um, a lot of the testing is done on rats, but aside from that, when it comes to, and this can be caffeine as well, um, and energy drinks, we've actually made a video on this where we basically took energy drinks, broke it down, and explained all of that to you. I'll put a card right here. But everything is done in an unreasonable amount that nobody is ever gonna be consuming. I mean, if you're drinking 20 Diet Cokes or 20 energy drinks a day, you're probably crazy anyways, no offense. But a lot of these studies done are done to be blown out of proportion on rats where 20 to 50, servings or amounts of this thing is being tested and you know trying to be proved that it's gonna you know give you cancer and they're just blowing it out of proportion like crazy so that's something you guys need to keep in mind um, Dr. Lane Norton has a bunch of things where he basically says that there has been nothing linked to actual cancer so I want you guys to really consider this if someone's telling you that aspartame or an artificial sweetener is gonna cause you cancer I'd probably ignore them I'd probably say that you don't know what you're talking about you know I'd say I'd highly recommend keep drinking your diet sodas within moderation um, it is a great way to reduce calories um, really get that sweet tooth feeling and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something um, I am open-minded you know if you guys disagree with me let me know why if you agree with me give it a thumbs up if we can get to 200 We'll do another video like this, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace. My life ended up at a crossroad. This is when I knew I hit rock bottom.